Manjaro is an Arch Linux-based distribution with a very enthusiastic community. But what sets it apart? Why do people love Manjaro? Stick around and we're going to try and find that out. Hello, hello, and welcome back, or welcome to DS Tech Media. I am Jay, and in this channel, I cover everything tech, specializing in Linux and open source software. And today's show is about Manjaro, which I'm excited to cover. I've had a lot of people recommend Manjaro to me to use as a Linux distro, and I've even had people request that I do a video about it. So Manjaro is based on Arch Linux, and if you don't know what Arch Linux is, it's its own independent distribution, and it's not based on Red Hat, Debian, or Slackware. It's generally for experienced or power users because you actually start with nothing but a text-based shell and the base Linux system and tools. And it requires you to partition, format, and configure, and install everything else that you're going to want on your system. The base system is the bare minimum, and it's what is needed to obtain or build your own system. Arch uses a rolling release model instead of having point releases, so everything in the repositories is constantly being updated to the latest possible version. The advantage here is that nothing you don't need or want is on your system and you get an optimized reliable compiled system built from source instead of binaries. Manjaro is designed to be uh, easier to use and learn and install than Arch and by taking the Arch repos and making a more traditional distribution out of it with a GUI and applications pre-built and it still retains the advantages of Arch. Uh, one major difference, uh, an Arch image is 681 megabytes, whereas Manjaro KDE's ISO image is 3.1 gigabytes, and that's because it's a full-fledged distro rather than the base Arch system. Manjaro has a community that's friendly to new users, unlike Arch. All right, so let's go to manjaro.org so here is the manjaro release model the unstable version is based off of arch linux's daily releases and that gets moved on to the testing version which becomes the point release of manjaro and of course the fast tracking of security updates makes it to the point releases as well. To prevent problems, Manjaro adds additional layers of testing to the Arch repositories and normal packages go through these additional layers and only be released for users who want a stable system when no more problems are found. And we have four official releases. There's XFCE, KDE, GNOME and Architect, which is a lot more like Arch. There's also nine community releases with uh, various window managers, Budgie, uh, Desktop, BSPWM, Awesome, Cinnamon, i3, LXDE, LXQT, Mate or Mate, Openbox, and there are nine ARM releases as well for the various single board computers like the Rock Pro, the Rock Pi, apparently all the Rock Pies, the Raspberry Pi, etc. and so forth. And even the Pine Phone and Pine Book. They have a um, convenient first steps guide here on their site. You can find common problems. They have an official user guide PDF. A forum and a wiki. You can also check 
all the packages online and there is a discover software which is basically like an online software store listing and a branch compare to compare different versions of the software also i want to point out that the discover software center has four categories uh, application packages snap packages and flat packs so they're all nicely divided up so i decided to go with the kde version of manjaro since i usually don't use uh, kde and they let you pick between LibreOffice or FreeOffice. I've never uh, actually tried FreeOffice, so I'll go with that. And I'll be back as soon as it's finished. And here we are in Manjaro KDE. And we're greeted with a welcome screen. And I like to see uh, distros do this. Uh, helpful for people who are new to Linux and trying a new operating system for the first time got documentation, readme, release info, wiki, support, and project information. That's very good. Uh, one thing I noticed right away is KDE seems to be very responsive and punchy, so I'm pretty happy about that. And we've got Firefox. Dolphin is the file manager. Uh, we start off with two workspaces. Let's go ahead and open up the system settings. And because it's KDE, we've got several global themes to choose from. And we can also customize everything down to the absolute specifics, like the window decorations, and the application style. We've got uh, several icon sets to choose from here. We can even change our cursors. Of course, that's not a Manjar thing, that's a KDE thing. So it comes with Conversation, which is an IRC client. Pretty cool for uh, Linux users. Not really something a new user is going to need. Uh, Contana is a music player that I've actually never used. But it looks pretty cool. Looks like it uh, shares your devices here. And it has Icecast, Derby, Shoutcast, and TuneIn. And it's even got some radio built in. That's, that's pretty cool. I really think that's awesome. I don't think Rhythmbox has that. So this comes with Steam pre-installed. That's awesome. We've got Qt Assistant, Qt Designer, Qt Linguist, and Qt QD Bus Viewer, which are all KDE specific development. Uh, for graphics, we've got a scanning application, a document viewer, and GwenView is the image viewer. For internet, we've got KDE Connect, which is pretty awesome. It lets you actually connect with your Android phone and it's got the text client for that. There's a download manager, uh, Vahi SSH and VNC server browsers, uh, comes with a BitTorrent client, and Thunderbird is the mail client. Under uh, multimedia, got some video uh, capture utilities and it comes with VLC pre installed. And here is the free office, which I elected to in install during uh, setup. And yeah, free office is pretty cool. Looks like it tries to kind of mimic Windows Office, Microsoft Office, ribbon pane or GUI. And we've got basically a writer, presentation or slideshow maker, and a spreadsheet client. Let's check out the wallpapers. Actually, it comes with a lot of cool uh, Manjara branded wallpapers. I actually really like that one. 
There's even a Matrix Manjaro. Hmm. Let's see, utilities, file light, disk usage statistics, the Kate text editor, arch archival tool, there's an app image launcher, which is kind of a daemon manager for app images. It's pretty cool. I've never seen that installed in a distro before. There's a user guide, a search, a calculator. There's a HP printer manager. That's pretty interesting. I've never seen that installed before. And it also comes with time shift pre-installed and if you don't know time shift is used for creating snapshot backups probably my favorite backup system it's kind of like apple's time machine okay so because this is kde we have tons of uh, configuration that we can do to the desktop such as we can edit our panel and change its size and width and everything about it. Plasma also comes with a whole bunch of widgets to pick from that we can add to uh, customize. So here's a system load viewer I can add to the panel. And here's a widget for total CPU use. And we can change the size. And I mean, there's probably about 40 or 50 already in here and you can even get more if you want. And all in all, KDE Plasma is a good looking desktop environment. And with Manjaro, if you had this installed on a laptop or desktop and you were showing someone who was new to Linux, they would probably be pretty impressed, I think. They would be surprised that it's free. I know when I tell people about Linux and how it's free and then they finally see it, they're usually very surprised because in their mind, free automatically equates to cheap or second rate. So they, they don't envision something that looks or acts like Windows or Mac OS. Okay, so now we're going to look at the most important aspects of Manjaro. And the first off is going to be the software management. So this is... PA Mac and all it really is is a GUI graphical front end for Arch Linux's Pac-Man package manager which is the command line version and it's an all-in-one way to add remove and find software for Arch. I actually used this on my Arch install on my other desktop and in some cases, I will want to use a PA Mac instead of relying on the command line. One awesome thing about it is it's broken up into categories just like any other software center. And it also has a groups tab with all kinds of groups. So like stuff for the i3 window manager, stuff for GNOME, stuff for Arduino development, etc. and so forth. And if we go to repositories, you've got core, extra, community, and multi-lib. And this is all stuff in the official Arch repositories. We can also find all of our updates in here as well. But one of the best things about Arch is the AUR or the Arch user repository, which is the equivalent of Ubuntu's PPA and the AUR isn't officially supported software rather it's software that users and third-party developers have added and published anyone can publish to the AUR technically and you have to actually enable it in PA Mac under preferences and they also have snap and flat pack tabs and you have to enable those as well and once you have the AUR enabled, we can search for things like DaVinci Resolve. And these are basically like recipes that are automated. They're like scripts that will pull and build DaVinci Resolve for Manjaro, which is a proprietary video editor. They also have the Bitwig Studio Digital Audio Workstation paid music production suite and Lightworks is also professional 
nonlinear video editor and you can find that in here as well and if I type in Steam we have several versions and add-ons for Steam here's the flat pack version this is the one that came pre-installed uh, this is Steam native so instead of being Steam built against the Ubuntu runtime this is built on the Arch runtime the native Arch runtime and everything that you search for here you can also break up into specifically if you want to search the flat pack the AUR or snaps every package in the aggregated search has a mark for if it's in the official repositories flat hub snaps or AUR so that's really cool and having this is definitely something that makes Arch Linux a lot easier to use for the general user and the other two things I really want to highlight about Manjaro are the Manjaro hardware detection and configuration and kernel management. So if we go to system settings and kernel, we have a whole list of kernels to install and use or remove available. So we're currently running 5.8.16.2. But we can go back to 5.7, 4.19, 4.14, all the way back to 4.4. And you can see they're marked. These are long-term support versions, and some of them are recommended. But even cooler is the real-time kernels can be installed and switched. And for someone like me who does music production, the real-time kernel can be particularly useful if you're recording live music and everything like that. You want to reduce your latency. So this feature is particularly awesome. Of course, on Arch, you can switch to the real-time kernel, but traditionally, I would do that through the command line. So having an easy way of doing that in the system settings is very helpful. And if we go to hardware configuration, I'm running this in a VM through VMware, so I'm not gonna be able to properly show it off. I'll post a screenshot, but you can find drivers for everything, including proprietary drivers for AMD or NVIDIA graphics cards. And of course you can switch between the open source or the proprietary drivers, and that's all conveniently done right in your hardware configuration under system setting and this is something Manjaro project is very proud of they even highlight it as one of their key features on their website so that's my look at Manjaro 20.1 KDE and I'm actually pretty impressed. I think this is an awesome distro. Definitely worth showing off to people to give them a sense for how smooth and good looking a proper Linux distribution can be. I think uh, this distro might not be the best for new users to Linux because it is based on Arch. But even then, I don't think it's that much harder to learn and maneuver than Ubuntu or even Fedora, honestly. Uh, if you're someone who has always wanted to try Arch and maybe you've been afraid to, you could definitely start off with Manjaro and get a get a better feel for it. One of the benefits of Arch, like the always up to date and access to the vast, vast number of unique packages that are in the AUR, then Manjaro is probably going to be for you. Stuff like DaVinci Resolve and Lightworks is not usually found in any distros, software centers, or app stores. That's a, definitely a huge advantage. Part of what made me try Arch Linux in the first place, and also the access to the latest drivers for hardware. In my case, I had a desktop with a brand new Radeon GPU at the time when I switched to Arch, and I was a Ubuntu user, but Ubuntu did not have drivers for my GPU, whereas at the time Arch did. But yeah, let me know what you think. Do you use Arch? Do you use Manjaro? What about Antergros? Antergros was another arch based distribution that was really popular that since dissolved and i never even got to do a video review of it but i would love to know what you think let me know in the comments down below if you like the video give it a thumbs up
And if you want to help me out, share this video on your social media platforms and subscribe. Every little bit of engagement makes all the difference to me. And you can find me on YouTube, DTube, Hive Blockchain via Peak D. I'm also on Minds, Mastodon, and Twitter. And you can find all the links to my social accounts and other video platforms in the description of this video. Until next time, thanks for watching. I'm Jay, and I'll see you in the next one.